Alright guys, hello and welcome back to League of Legends. Uh, this game we are playing Flex Q. This, I should say this is another Flex Q game. And if I center on me here, and I change the line to war to red. Um, I played a lot of games recently. Don't know if this is actually like the fifth game or whatever, but this is one of my placement games. Um, spoiler warning, I get bronze five in the placements. So, yeah. But, you know, I'll show you, I'll kind of show you the the go-to how everything happened, but I'm going to skip it here to uh, the first first moment of doom. That way you guys don't have to watch me uh, leave for that guy. But if I hold tab, you can see um, I'm actually under farming. I'm, I'm below this Ezreal down here. Uh, this Ezreal is 13, I have 9. I can move that around for you guys. And other than that, everything's just going okay. And there it is, first blood, Jarvan and uh, J Jarvan and Darius up top get the kill. Of course they didn't see our Warwick, so they're a little worried. And I don't know why it's running at 60 FPS right now, but it is. Uh, let me let me pause both real quick. Okay, so that should help. I turned the quality all the way down on the characters. I'm just trying to farm, and that didn't help the quality at all. And as you see, I'm kind of catching up to him. My goal is also to keep him out of uh, out of out of farming distance and everything. But yeah, that didn't help at all. So I might as well just turn the character quality back up. But once again, let me pause here, and I'm, well, I'll just, I'll just, yeah, I'm going to turn the character quality back. I don't know why it's so slow, but yeah, I, basically, th during the landing phase, I'm just trying to farm as well as him, and I start catching him here. I actually start, you know, catching up, and I don't know how I missed that minion or that minion either. That actually was really catching me up. I wild phase four, and I just jump out of the way. Like I said, I'm going to pause right here, and, um do the same. Um, sadly, however, there will be no more live gameplay because no matter what I lag, but yeah, obviously, just, you know, basically trying to farm. I know he's in that bush, that's why I'm staying near the minions. I added a lot of pigs coming from everything. We don't have any wards right now, neither neither one of us do. I believe both of our wards are... Yeah, both of our wards are still on cooldown, so we can't ward the river. But it's fine, because as far as we knew, Jarvan wasn't in the river at that moment anyways. But, um... I love playing Tristana. I've kind of fallen in love with, with her again. Because... Uh, she's so hard to gank for the enemy team. You know, because of her of her W. Her W is her jump. Um, okay, and Elric, since you're probably watching this, I'll explain things. See? And I, I mean I had you burn my flash. I didn't have my E to put on him, I'd already used it on driving, but Okay, so all right, what it is is every champion has a passive and four abilities, and every champion also has um, summoner summoner spells that they can use. And I just use my flash and my heal right there to survive. Flash teleports your champion a distance ahead of where you are. It just instantly moves your champion. It doesn't interrupt any spell casting though. And see, they were making me miss that minion, and it was pissing me off. Uh, but essentially there's three lanes, top, middle, and bottom, and then there's the jungle. And the bot lane is composed of the AD carry, or attack damage carry, and the support. 
and obviously our Camille just killed the enemy top laner. And as an AD carry, your damage is literally DP, your, or your, your job is literally DPS. Um, there's different types of champions that do that. I am more of an auto attack based champion, and Ezreal is a spell sling. So, my job is to do damage with my auto attacks, but my E. Also is a massive help, that's why I just threw it on that tower and walked away. Because my E can damage towers. So, and my, uh, Tristana's E happens to be a, uh, a bomb. I don't, I don't remember the name. Let me see if I can, I can, I can find it out. Explosive charge, and I can have passive, the pa it has a passive and an active. Uh, the passive is when... Enemies explode when slain by Tristana's phasing attack, giving 100 plus 2 per, plus a scaling AP, which is a... I think my AP right now is 8, so that's a... What is it? It's 2 of 8. Which is like a... It's a one, that's a 1 of 4, so that's a 20% ratio. So it's a 20% AP ratio for the passive. And then that active places a bomb on an enemy or turret that explodes after 4 seconds, dealing six, dealing 80 plus uh, a portion of physical damage, which I don't know the ratio, and a portion of uh, a 50% AP ratio as physical damage. Each attack charges the bomb's damage by 30%. And the reason I jumped out of him is because when he's doing that stampede thing, and the chains are breaking, he can, um, he can deal, he can, he can, he can lock it down. At four charges, the bomb explodes immediately, the detonation radius is twice as large if used on a turn. So basically, after four auto attacks, it, instant, it instantly explodes the bomb, and it does 120% more damage. And so, yeah, that's that's what that is. Um, her W is rocket jump, which is the jump thing that I do all the time, which is a 50% AP ratio. It also slows enemies by 60% for one second, which I mean, hell, I need to build her AP and give her Rhyalize with that shit. But kills, assists, and max stacks on explosive charge detonation. So if I throw an E use my jump and auto attack them four times and get it to explode my jump will reset and I'll be able to jump back out so a, a kill assist or forcing my bomb to explode will give me a reset and um, allow me to jump again my Q literally just increases my attack speed by 30% for five seconds at level one which I used right there on accident <laughs> my passive increases my attack range as I level so my auto attack range will, throughout the entire game will just continue to get longer and longer and longer. And since I know you played well, I know you'll understand the, the concept of DPS. And I got, I went and bought a BF sword and part of my Rune and Hurricane. But the reason I get the BF sword is to increase my damage. It gives a good damage buff. Let me see if I can. Uh, 40 attack damage. Which, for me, puts my damage up to 140, which makes it super easy to farm. As we can see, I've already caught up to Ezreal and farm, and I'm barely just behind it now. And Shyla is a master of trolling. She likes making fun of- she likes picking on the enemy team, especially when she knows she's better than them. Which she's actually really good. But the support job. Um, generally, a healer, or a tank, or a combination. Sometimes it's just a spellcaster. For some of them are just spellcasters. And And once again I use my jump to get out. See that's why it's so hard for them to do anything to me as Tristana because of my jump. I, I yeah, I'm real I'm really good at if I have it I can get out of the way. Actually I didn't know the explosive charge thing would reset my cooldown, but I 
used my alt to knock him away. My alt is basically just a huge rocket that deals a lot of damage. But support and AD carry are basically taken care of. I farm, she protects me throughout the entire game. That's basically her job is to protect me. And right here, we don't know where the enemies are, but we decide to keep pushing, and then we see Alistair. But the only reason we decide to keep pushing is because I can jump out, I can get out of, I can get out of the way, no problem. But on to mid lane. The mid laner is generally a spellcaster or an assassin. Um, our mid laner is Lux, which is a, who is a spellcaster, and their mid laner is a Kali, who is an assassin. So, I'm sure you know exactly what that means, and that, that is basically the mid laner's job. Sometimes the mid laner is a tank, but that is very, very rare. And the top laner. The top laner is generally an AD fighter or tank. That's the top laner row. The jungler is... And that's first turret, which... The red team destroyed first turret is really good for us because we're red, obviously. And actually, I don't know if you can tell. But okay, the top right of the map is red, bottom left of the map is blue. Red team turret but our, our team got the first tower, so that gave us, everyone on our team, 400 bonus gold. And once again, we don't know where the enemies are, but we can see that they're not under their tower. And as you see, I did that... I use my thing to blow up the tower, and if I scroll this way a bit, you can see how much damage we've done to it with just two bombs. And I didn't auto-attack it the fourth time because he was standing here. Let me see if I can't jump back there. Okay. Okay. Now, you see, he's standing right here. If I would have actually hit this a fourth time and forced it to explode, I'll let you watch where the, um, where the explosion radius is. You see how he walked over here and it hit him. So if I would have still been standing where he was, it would have, the tower, the bomb would have hit him and that would have been me causing damage to Ezreal under tower. So their tower would have targeted me and started shooting me. So that's why I stayed... That's why I stopped attacking it and didn't force it to explode. Uh, yeah, so, so, so for those of you watching wondering why, I did that on purpose. I've actually played Tristana enough to know that when I when the bomb blows up on the tower and they're near the tower, it punishes me. And if I hit hold tab, you can see that I'm actually now I'm beating him in fun. Fifteen minutes in, laning phase is still kinda going on and I'm beating him in fun. And right now we just saw our I was feeling my kill. I yell at her a lot about that. But I jumped over him and altered him back into my team. I flashed over to, to try and get the kill and I only got the assist. I wanted to find Ezreal but he wasn't there. He was probably hiding under his tower. But yeah, I, I, I can jump over enemies and knock them back towards my end. We have four people going for Dragon, so there's no reason for me to go over there. We just killed one of their people. Their Darius is top lane, and their Jarvan actually we killed their Jarvan too, so he was respawning. So there was no reason for us to, for me to go over there. But now this Ezreal. Sixty percent bonus damage is still really good. But yeah, with four people there and their their jungler and their support dead, there was no reason for me to go and help with the dragon. But what Dragon does is it gives your team a buff, and uh, Infernal Drake boosts your AP and AD, ability power and attack damage, while Ocean Drake gives you mana regen and I think health regen? 
I don't know for sure. Can I hit O and find out? Oh, I can just hit O and that stays up there. Okay. No, I can't. Yeah, so I don't I don't know for sure, but yeah. And I have a lot of gold. It's not showing me how much gold I have, but I have a lot of gold. I have enough to buy my runins completely, and I'm deciding what to buy right now. And I decided to go for boots. And a uh, sword. So I'm working on my, my um, Berserker's Greaves right now. But, yeah, there was no reason for me to go and help with the dragon because we had dragon completely under control. And as you can see by the, the stuff at the top, we're even on towers. We're pretty close on gold. We're about a full thousand behind, but we are high on... We are ahead on gold. And that's what Rune and Hurricane does. The little ball behind me shoots out two bolts, attacking two targets near what I'm attacking, but they have to be of the same... Type. Like, I can't shoot a tower and it won't... It'll, if I attack the tower, it won't shoot anything up. If I shoot a champion, it'll shoot anything near it. If I shoot a minion, it'll shoot anything near it. Structures are the only things... Structures are the only exception to the rule. And Jarvan, right there, right there, he just missed his, his Q, which is really hard. And I'll explain what happened. Uh, let me drop back. Mm, okay. So. Okay. So you saw him throw his Q and miss. This is Jarvin's E. This um, thing that looks exactly like his spear. He basically throws a banner into the air and it lands down. And it damages the enemy slightly. But if he throws his Q, which was the thing... It, it's a, it, it basically he's, he shoves his spear forward and it extends and then he it retracts but if it connects with his E it pulls him to it and knocks up enemies around it and in the path but obviously he just missed that so which was really good for us being as he botched that that was really good for us and that's why Shiloh was laughing at him Okay, and now on to the role of the jungler, because I basically just I basically explained every role so far. The jungler is essentially a ro a roaming support. They farm the jungle area of the map, which is this area and this area, and this is the river. Um, Rift Herald and Baron spawn here, and the Dragon spawn here. But the jungler just roams around, which you can see in the top left corner, uh, that Baron is spawning in a minute. But yeah, the jungler roams around the map, farming the jungle, and ganks the lanes, which, uh, gank, he basically is what the Jarvan tried to do, come in the lane and get a kill for him or the laner to give them the assistance they needed to get ahead, which obviously isn't working for them. They haven't really gotten many successful games, although they are still a little ahead in goal. And... Which, what you just saw there, was actually really bad for us. And that was even worse. But we didn't get asked where we were because this whole time that our team got triple killed, we were fighting our lane opponents in the bot lane. We were trying to... And right here, I'm, I'm going... Right now, I decided I'm going for the Darius. Red and I thought I could get him, but they got the turret, and then I see him going for the other turret. And I'm like, okay, time to strike. You know, he's still going for turrets, he's going to be in turret range. I should be able to take him off. And right there, the Lux missed her all. The Lux missed her all is why I died. But we did get a double kill, and he's going to live because he did Warwick. Very, very good uh, sustain on him. And if I hit O, you could see that I just bought my Berserker Greaves. 
and our Lux just managed to kill their AD carry, and Warwick is about to kill somebody. I mean, yes, he is. He just killed their jungler. But yes, the jungler's job is basically a roaming support. And roam around, help the lanes, um, and try and try and try and keep control of of objectives. Um, Baron, Dragon, and Rift Herald are all really big objectives. And somebody wanted the bot tower, but I said let's go for mid because I was there. But then Akali did her invisible thing and I decided not to. And they got the tower down on bot lane, so we're all kind of grouping down, moving down the bot lane right now. And I believe we're about to kill this. Oh. I didn't want to take free damage from him. Yeah, my first kill of the game. And me and Lux are kind of going for this. But... We get to Sakali instead. This was good, this was really good. Me and Lux decided to wait right here. And she hits her. And I used my ult to kill her, because she was really low. And I was really happy that it actually got her, so. But now we're recalling to stop this Darius from taking our third top tower. And okay, now to explain the towers. And he actually managed to take it. I didn't realize. I don't didn't remember that. Okay, so the first line of towers, which is if you can follow my novel picture, these ones here, this one. It, this one's usually right about here, and this one's right about here, and ours are in the same positions on the opposite side. They basically are the first line of defense. And they're usually the easiest to take down, too, because they're the farthest away from the enemy base. The second tower, which is the one you just saw on the screen, are the are some of the hardest to take down. Usually those are pretty easy to defend. Not for any special reason. It's not like they're amazing, but they're... That Lux just failed a flash. You guys didn't see it, but she failed her flash over a very tiny wall. And me, Shyla, and Halfbreed all laughed at her. But the tower I'm standing next to is generally easy enough to defend. It's just outside of the base. There's really no way to, to jump over the wall and get to the people in there. And I just bought my full Infinity Edge, which um, increases the damage my Critical Strikes do. And I'm at a decent crit chance. Can I hold C? Yeah, I can hold C. Uh, critical chance is 51%. So yeah, I'm at a decent Critical Strike chance right now. I'm over... I can hit C. I'm over... More than 50% of the time, I'm getting... Critical strikes. But those ones are, are easy enough to defend, like I said. The innermost turret, excuse me, is known as the inhibitor turret. And they are generally the hardest to defend, in my experience. And right here, I'm deciding to try and flip push. And somebody just said they're on their way. And I decide to back off because I don't see the enemy. Though know, if you watch right here, watch the minimap in the bottom left corner, there's Darius, and he would have killed me. And I kept backing up. I, the reason I, I walked all the way back there was because I didn't know where the rest of the enemies were. So, my luck, they could have been coming in through the topside jungle and got caught me if I had tried to recall. And now I could see the enemies are back in mid, and I believe, yeah, I'm going right back up top lane to try and push that tower again. Because uh, we have three in mid, and now they have only four in mid. And... 
um, our, we have our Camille down in bot lane putting pressure on the map, forcing them to diverge their attention. And now Camille's going up to Rome mid, and I'm just going to push this tower. I have my bomb, and see they're requesting help, and Warwick is heading this way. And you saw how much damage my bomb actually did. And once again, as soon as Darius shows up, I get ready to leave. But War I, I realized that half read slash Warwick was really close, and I decided to stick around. And Darius is still here. And we got the power, and oh, I ulted him. I used my ult to knock him away from Warwick on that. And I died. But Warwick, I mean, oh my god, like, half free. Warwick is such a strong champion. And he's going to chase her down. And get the kill. And we also took a tower in mid lane. So for my death, we took two towers. That is ascent that is worth, especially the second tower in mid lane. But yeah, the, the inhibitor tower right here, right here on the screen, protects the inhibitor, as, as you probably guessed. And what the inhibitor does is it keeps the minions small and easy to control. The enemy minions small and easy to control. If an enemy destroys an inhibitor, then in that lane they get what are called super minions, which are big giant siege minions. And as you can see right now, the, the battle has turned. We, ha we are now, we have one extra tower, we are 3,000 gold ahead, almost, or 2.3 thousand gold ahead, and we are eight, eight kills ahead, so we are way in the lead right now. So we can kind of do whatever we want, and I am much, much stronger than this as at this point. And I use my ult to knock him away. I am very, very mean. I don't like when people are coming on me when they can kill me. But I am much stronger than the Ezreal, even at this point of being 2 2 and 7. He's 0 2 and 1 with barely any more farm than me, and I am just stronger than him in general. And Warwick is there kicking butt, and I'm just pushing the wave. And I farmed the Raptors because I wanted the gold. Oh, I am also building Lord Dominic's Regard. Which basically says, you have more health than we need? Well then fine, I'm going to have more damage and beat you up easier. And that right now, um, Halfbreed at this point is telling us to keep them occupied. And he will get the dragon. And my job is, okay, I'm going to push. And I see the Akali coming for me, and I decide that I don't want to... And right there, I ran away because I almost died. Like, I'm at low health right here. I don't want to be in these fights. But I now have four kills. Or three kills. Okay, I, I am now three, two, and nine. So yeah, I am very much stronger than Ezreal. And I have the same farm as him, virtually. So, not only is Tristana amazing at pushing towers, but I am already ahead of the enemy Ezreal. So I am doing my job as an AD carry, which is beat the enemy AD carry. And right here, you're about to see... Me and Camille push the tower like it's nothing. And I got Because I didn't have my jump or heal or anything like that. But we could watch this team fight and see Tyler get murdered. Because nobody turned to help her. And our Warwick was up in top lane. And as you can see, the blue pings. They were pinging to get the towers. The enemies want to take those two towers. But, um, I'm respawning in 30 seconds, and we still have three team, mem 
teammates up. And I think they managed to get these out. But as you can see by the timeline, the game is coming to an end. What is basically exploded? But Capri is in as Warwick, and here is everybody else. And I just got two more kills, and we just cleaned up that team that team fight. We only lost one person to completely ace their team. So yeah. And now we're gonna just run down mid lane. I believe we win off of that. Oh no, we don't. Well, there's another team fight that goes on. And we go to the power the minions are attacking, and I just use my bomb and shred it down the mountain. And I'm going to the next tower now. And I immediately get out of range. We don't want to fight this. They just killed our Warwick, and we don't have luck. So right now it's a three on four with with our strongest member not being. Here. And I mean Shyla is just shy. I walked what I did there was I walked close to her so I could heal her. And now I walked her. And boom, there it is. Now the only one alive is their, is their Akali. I am 7-3 right now. And we push again. The, there's three of us. The three, three of the, three of us are very, the three of us together are very strong. I immediately go for tower while Camille is tanking. And now I just go for the Nexus and that's it. That's it. So I'm going to pause right there. Woo! That was close. But yeah, that's game. Uh, that's basically, that's a basic explanation. Um, Elric, if you want to know, learn more, you're really going to have to play so I, I can explain while we play. But yeah, that's a basic explanation of it. And... For the rest of you guys, I hope you enjoyed this game. I know it was long, but I was kind of explaining. So, 30, I ended it. I paused it right at 33, 33. That's funny. Um, but, you know, as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, this road to bronze is going to be really tough. Or, this road out of bronze is going to be really tough for me. But, like I said, spoiler warning, I get bronze 5. Hey, like, see the plus 50 above my head? That means I was the one to get the last hit on the Nexus. But, yeah, that's the goal. You, Your goal is to push through one or all of the lanes, and you have to have at least one inhibitor down to be able to attack the Nexus Towers. And to attack, and the Nexus. You have to have the Nexus Towers down to attack the Nexus. You have to have the inhibitor, one of the inhibitors down to attack the inhibit to attack anything behind. You know, basically, you can't you can't kill like the second tower in the lane and skip the first. You have to kill your way through the lane, basically. Otherwise, people would just go in behind everything and just kill the nexus, and that'd be really broken. But yeah, the the goal it's basically like a like um. You played World of Warcraft. Um, I don't know if you played any StarCraft or anything. There was a mod to StarCraft 2 which spawned the MOBA front and MOBA thing. And that's basically it. Um, it's basically like a raid. It's a 5v5 raid where you, you have your assigned position. And you basically go there and try and do your job. You have to take out the enemy structures to get to the 
their power core, and then you destroy their power core. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, that's the best explanation I can give. But yeah, like I said, as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks a lot for the support. Uh, Halfbreed and Shyler are definitely going to help me work through all this stuff. Um, one only, one bad thing, obviously, is Tristana's not amazing in the early game. She's She gets better and better as she gets more, more damage and more items. She gets even scarier, but uh, that's it for today. Like I said, once again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.